This last video focuses on something called geostrophic winds in the jet stream. If you remember back to our wind turbine project, we discussed how wind speed is impacted by friction. This happens when the air runs into trees, buildings, or other objects. Friction is a force that opposes the motion of an object. The frictional force on air is greatest near the surface, but decreases as you move up in the atmosphere. This top part of the diagram shows upper level wind. There is little to no frictional force impacting this wind, therefore it can travel at great speeds. The only forces impacting this wind are the pressure gradient force and the Coriolis force. The lower part of the diagram shows surface wind. The frictional force not only slows the wind, but it also changes the direction the wind will travel. So here's the frictional force, and because of the friction, the wind is traveling in this direction. Geostrophic winds occur when the pressure gradient force, remember this is determined by the difference in high and low pressure and how close the isobars are, and the Coriolis force are balanced. Geostrophic winds travel parallel to isobars and are fastest when the pressure gradient is the highest, meaning the isobars are very close together. The jet stream is a type of geostrophic wind because the jet stream occurs in the upper levels of the troposphere. These winds travel from west to east and are usually fastest when we have the greatest temperature difference between the equator and the poles. Now this should make sense because temperature is related to pressure and differences in pressure cause wind. Keeping this in mind, you should guess that the jet stream travels fastest during the winter months and slower during the summer months. Now there's a second subtropical jet stream and this usually occurs in winter time. This forms between the tropical and subtropical air masses. Now the position of the jet stream is really important, especially for us here in Minnesota. So here we are in Minnesota. The position changes with the seasons. Now here's how the jet stream impacts us here in Minnesota. If the jet stream is located south of Minnesota, it's going to pull down very cold Arctic air from Canada, creating air temperatures that are lower than normal. So like in this example right here these guys would be experiencing colder than normal conditions. However, if the jet stream is north of Minnesota, it will pull up warm air from the Gulf of Mexico, which is also very humid. This should make our air temperatures warmer than normal. So here we have that warm air from the Gulf of Mexico being pulled up by the jet stream, making these areas warmer and more humid than normal. The jet stream also plays a role in creating storms. Now if the jet stream is very curved, it will help produce high and low pressure cells which work together to form storms like we've talked about. However, if the jet stream is a bit more flat, high and low pressure systems are far away from each other, which creates long stretches of unchanging, usually nice weather. Finally, uh, there's a link here that kind of talks about how uh, the jet stream works. I'd highly recommend you guys taking a look at both of these. Um, and it also kind of ties into climate change. So those are geostrophic winds and the jet stream, how they form, what they are, and how they impact us here in Minnesota.